In this video, we're gonna get an old chainsaw running that's been stored improperly and has been sitting around in the garage or the shed for a few years without being touched. We're gonna to be using this old pool and wood shark as an example, but all of these steps apply for pretty much any chainsaw or any small engine for that matter. So we're gonna be going over the steps that it takes to get it running, as well as some of the preventative maintenance and stuff you'll wanna check on the saw so that once you get it running, it'll stay running and be reliable so that you can actually use it. And if you wanna learn how to fix your vehicle, do budget restorations, troubleshoot equipment, and all sorts of other types of garage related stuff, be sure to subscribe to Midwest Garage so you don't miss anything. Now I'll get to the point as fast as possible. This right here is an old pool and wood shark model 1950. I'm not really sure on the age of it, but I'm guessing it's probably around 10 years old, not much older than that. Now we all know that a gasoline engine, whether it's in your car or it's a small engine or it's a four stroke or a two stroke, needs three things to run. And that's fuel, spark, and air. You also need compression, but I'm gonna tell you right now, if you have a pool and chainsaw that doesn't have compression, which we're gonna be checking for in a second, but if it doesn't have compression, it's honestly not worth fixing. And that's because these saws are anywhere from 90 to 120 bucks brand new out of a big box store. You can even get them at Walmart. So if it doesn't have compression, I wouldn't waste my time trying to get it running and do an engine work when I could just go buy another one for a hundred bucks. But, and I feel like I have to mention this because I've said it in other videos, these pool and chainsaws are good saws. If you're just the average homeowner or the average guy that likes to cut a little bit of firewood on the weekends, or maybe you have a saw sitting around to clean up some storm damage, you know, a couple times a year, then a pool and is really a good idea. And as long as you take care of them, they will do exactly what they were built to do. And that is occasional and light use. Obviously, you're not gonna use a pool in if you're in the tree service or the forestry department because that's simply not what they were designed to do. They were designed for the homeowner for, like I said, cutting a little bit of firewood on the weekends or cutting campfire wood or doing storm cleanup. So as long as you take care of them, they are good saws, I promise you. Now let's get into it and get this old thing running. So as you can see, this thing was put away dirty and put away improperly. You can still hear the fuel that they left inside this thing. As I'm going with this, I'll explain how to properly store these things so that they will stay running. But first thing we're going to do is pop this top cover off. And we're just going to do that with these three bolts that are holding the top cover on. Now the first thing you want to do is check for compression because like I said, if we don't have compression, then there's no point in getting this thing running. So an easy check for compression is you can pull the spark plug off by removing the boot and then remove the spark plug. And we're doing that with a 19 millimeter. And obviously we're going to get a new spark plug for this, but for now, just to get it running, all I'm gonna do is clean it off a little bit. So to check for compression, it's really easy. All you have to do is hold your thumb over your spark plug hole and give a pull on the rope. And I don't know if you could hear that, but it definitely has compression. So that means that it will run as long as it's getting fuel, air, and spark. So what we're gonna do next is check for spark. And if you don't have spark, first thing you can do is get a new spark plug. But to do that, we'll just plug the spark plug back into the boot, set it on something metal. And when you pull on the rope, you should see spark between these two electrodes. So as you can see, we didn't have spark. So I grabbed a different plug and we'll see if it works now. Good, so we have spark. So since we have spark, we can throw this back in. I like to kind of look in there too, 
and it looks like there's a quite a bit of carbon buildup, but it's not too bad, not enough where it's going to prevent it from running. So we'll screw this back in. Now the next thing to check is air, which if you have a cheap air filter like this, you can just buy a new one, or you can wash these out with a mild soap and some water. Make sure it's completely dry before you put it back in though. I also like to check and make sure that the choke is working. And the carburetor in there actually looks pretty clean from the air side anyway. But once this is clean, we'll have air and spark. So now let's get this old gas out of here and replace the filter and put some new gas in there. Also a good idea is while you're messing around in here, it's not a bad idea to just pull your choke out. It closes this butterfly valve in here and it just helps kind of prevent stuff from getting into the carburetor and the engine while you're messing around. So we'll pop this gas cap off and dispose of the old gas. I'm excited to see how nasty this stuff is. Huh. And it really doesn't look too bad. But if you use fuel with ethanol in it, it can varnish and gum up very easily. So even if you're not planning on storing it for a long time, but you're still storing it, it's good to have non-ethanol fuel in here. So now I'll take my grabber here, and I've talked about these before. These are really cheap at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's just a little grabber tool. I like to use this when I'm taking the fuel filter out of a small engine like this. And it looks like the filter wasn't even connected. And it really doesn't look too bad, but I'm going to go ahead and replace it anyway, because if I'm already in here, it just makes sense to replace it. And now that I'm digging in here, I see that the fuel line actually broke. There's a small piece of it. And it looks like it was really brittle and just kind of broke apart, which could be part of the reason why it's not getting fuel. So I'll replace that fuel line first. So if you have brittle fuel lines, then, which probably isn't too uncommon if it's been sitting for a long time with fuel in it. This is a 5 16 First, you want to pull this air box off. After you pull the air box off, the carburetor will just pop right up. So you can just slide that out. This little boot around the choke pops up then you just pull the whole carburetor off so a little bit of a better look right down here is your primer bulb so you got to make sure that's connected and then we're just replacing these two lines that were brittle and had broken so I don't know if you can tell or if you even give a crap but it's a new day I had to go pick up some fuel lines these are just universal fuel lines um, for weed eaters, chainsaws, stuff like that. You can get these anywhere that they sell small engines. Uh, you can get them from a parts store or Menards or Lowe's. Um, I got this from a steel dealer, but you can find them pretty much anywhere. So now what we're gonna do is replace these fuel lines, get the new filter on so that hopefully we can get this saw running. After it's running, I am going to clean this thing up and then show you some of the preventative maintenance on these saws and what they require, and also show you how to store them properly so that, like I said before, they continue to be reliable for you so that you have a good running saw that's gonna start for you every time. And since we're on the subject of fuel and fuel lines and, and that whole part of the system, if you have a saw like this and you occasionally use it and it's gonna spend more time being stored than it is uh, being used, then I highly recommend just getting a fuel like this this is a pre-mixed fuel, ready to use. It's a little bit more expensive than mixing your own fuel, but if you don't use it that much, this stuff is specifically designed for long-term storage. Yeah, it's a high quality fuel, high quality oil, and although I don't recommend storing your, storing your equipment with fuel in it, if you're going to, that's the route that you wanna go 
Um, it's ethanol free fuel and it's good to go. For me, my saws that I primarily use, I get a lot of use out of them and they all use a 50 to one mix ratio. And so for something like this that I don't use, um, I'm never gonna mix up a can of 40 to one mix. So I just buy this and it's perfect. So to start where we left off, I'm just gonna be replacing these. So pull these out of the package. Another useful tool for this is a small pick or an awl. And that's so you can push your old fuel line out of the hole if it's stuck in there. And then you can dig it out um, from inside the tank there. So just pop that through and then we can get underway. And kind of a helpful tip with installing this, it's kind of a tight squeeze, but if you kind of twist the fuel line just a little bit to preload it with a little bit of spring, as you push down through the hole, that twist will help it kind of corkscrew in and it helps it go through that tight little hole a little bit easier. And it's fine to use like a little bit of petroleum jelly or something on the outside of the fuel line here just to lube it up a little bit so that it goes a little bit easier through the hole. So then you just pull it through the tank like this and then connect it to your carburetor. And then from there, you can kind of set how much of this you want to be sitting inside the tank. Once you get your fuel line on, you can reconnect your throttle and then get rid of some of the slack in your fuel line by pulling it through the tank. And then slide your carburetor back onto the pins. Then you can replace your air box after cleaning it up just a hair. Choke works, on off switch works, and the throttle is good to go. Next order of business is to tip the tank up, shake it out really well, get all these small pieces out of there, and then take your new fuel filter, hook it up to your line, and pop it into the tank. And now we can put some gas in this and see if it runs. first pull. Seems to run pretty good. Uh, what we'll do now is clean it up and go over some of the preventative maintenance of this thing to keep it running reliable. After every use, you should be checking your fuel level, checking your bar and chain oil level, if you don't go through a full tank, of course. Bar and chain oil is fine to leave in the saw, just 
know that a lot of saws do leak over time. So if you keep barring chain oil in, you might make a little bit of a mess. After every use, you should be cleaning your air filter. One like this can be washed with mild soap and warm water. And of course, make sure it's completely dry before you put it back in the saw and run it. Your spark plug should be changed once a year. If you really don't use your saw that often, then I wouldn't worry about changing it once a year, but it is something that should be checked periodically. And on these pull-ins, you wanna make sure that your gap on your spark plug is set to 30 thousandths. Otherwise, they won't stay running when they're hot. I have another video explaining that if you're wondering why your chainsaw won't continue to run uh, once you've been using it for a while. Your pull rope is something that's often overlooked by a lot of people. Uh, you just want to check it out, pull it out all the way, or you can pull the entire recoil out. And you just want to replace this if it's frayed or it's getting bad. Even if it's starting to get oily and dirty, it's not a bad idea to replace it so that way it doesn't break on you while you're trying to use it. Uh, the reason oil and dirt can ruin your pull rope is because the oil and dirt can get in the fibers and really start to fray them out and then it just shortens the life of the pull rope. You can also lube up your recoil in here to keep that going strong. When it comes to your bar and chain, you should be sharpening your chain every time you fill up with a new tank of gas. I can show you guys how to sharpen a chain if you want, but I'm sure there's thousands of videos already out there explaining how to do that. One thing that's often overlooked though, is a lot of people when they pull their chain off, they won't actually clean this groove that the chain runs on on the bar. And you can do that with a pick, uh, something like this, and just clean out inside of that groove all along your bar to make sure that it doesn't wear prematurely. Another thing you should be doing is every time you sharpen your chain, you should be flipping your bar so that it's running upside down and you're doing that to extend the life of the bar because if you continue to run it in the same manner, then it's going to get worn on one side more than the other and then you have to buy a new bar. Also, you'll see all of the gunk in here. All of this should be cleaned out for the most part. It's gonna get nasty in there, but if your oil feeds are blocked up, then you're not gonna be having, then you're not gonna have barn chain oil doing its job and lubricating everything. Also on these pull-ins, the chain tensioner is down in here. Continuing with your bar, when you pull your cover plate off here to uh, pull your bar and chain off. You want to make sure you always clean out in there really well. Make sure that you are lubing the sprockets here if you can and checking the sprocket because that's a pretty common wear point on a chainsaw. And you want to make sure you keep it clean because your bar and chain oil actually has passageways that lubes this entire bar and chain. And so if those are blocked up or clogged, then you're going to run into issues where you're ruining chains and bars and it just gets expensive. So that's just some of the basics when it comes to maintaining your saw properly and also storing it properly. Making sure you don't have gas in there that contains ethanol and making sure it's a proper mix. And even with this stuff where it says it's designed for long-term storage or a lot of two cycle oils actually have a fuel stabilizer in it, it's still something that's not really worth trusting. Uh, it's, you're better off just draining the tank. It's not hard on these things. You just tip it up. Um, and then when it comes to long-term storage, you wanna keep turning the engine over, putting it on choke, starting it over and over again until all of that fuel is completely out of the carburetor. Otherwise, it's still gonna varnish up, especially if you're using a fuel with ethanol in it. So when it comes to getting an old saw running that hasn't seen daylight in years, I hope you guys have a better understanding of what goes into it. It's actually really simple. As long as you have compression, then all you need is fuel, air, and spark. And it's pretty simple. From there, there's some fine tuning things to do, stuff like that. But as long as you maintain them and you kind of go through that checklist, 
that I just showed you, then really you should never have to do extensive maintenance or buy a new saw because if you take care of it, it will last. You can check out these other videos that are gonna pop up. I highly recommend checking those out. Uh, if you like the channel, please subscribe. I have new stuff coming out every week um, pertaining to small engines, vehicles, pretty much anything the average guy has in their garage. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.